Good morning, everyone. For everyone that's on via Zoom today as well. So we begin then on page six of your booklet. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom now and forever. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. with you and also with you let us pray from across O oh god your christ the firstborn of creation has taken up his rule fashion our lives after the pattern of his cross school our hearts in his compassion and since he has brought us to share in the inheritance of the saints in light, lead us by his shepherd's hand into the fold of eternal life in paradise. The same who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. <clears throat> Jeremiah pronounces God's judgment against the rulers of Judah, whose faithlessness has resulted in defeat and exile. A reading from the book to the prophet Jeremiah. Woe to the shepherds who destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, says the Lord. Therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, concerning the shepherds who shepherd my people, it is you who have scattered my flock and driven them away and you have not attended to them. So I will attend to you for your evil doings, says the Lord. 
Then I myself will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the lands where I have driven them, and I will bring them back to their fold, and they shall be fruitful and multiply. I will raise my shepherds over them who will shepherd them, and they shall not fear any longer or be dismayed, nor shall any be missing, says the Lord. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch, and he shall reign as king and deal wisely, and shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In his days, Judah will be saved, and Israel will live in safety. And this is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. The word of the Lord. We will pray the canticle responsibly, dividing at the asterisk. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior. Through his holy prophets, he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies. He promised to show mercy to our fathers. This was the oath he swore to our father, Abraham. Free to worship him without fear. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High. To give people knowledge of salvation. In the tender compassion of our God, to shine on those who dwell in darkness in the shadow of death. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it is now, and it may be The letter of Paul to the Colossians is a response to the disputes within that community, as to what was accomplished in Christ. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Colossians. May you be made strong with all the strength that comes from his glorious power. And may you be prepared to endure everything with patience, while joyfully giving thanks to the Father, who has enabled you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has rescued us from the power of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption the forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation, for in him all things in heaven and on earth were created, things visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or powers. All things have been created through him and for him. He himself is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He's the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he might come to have first place in everything. For in him, all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell. And through him, God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of his cross. The word of the Lord. Rejoice again, I say, rejoice. 
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. When they came to the place that is called the skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they cast lots to divide his clothing. The people stood by watching Jesus on the cross. But the leaders scoffed at him, saying, he saved others. Let him save himself if he is the Messiah of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him. This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who were hanged there kept deriding him and saying, are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed have been condemned justly, for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus Remember me when you come into your kingdom. He replied, truly, I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. The gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise you, Lord Christ. Christ. like to begin by sharing this reflection by the late o H. King Ulmig. There are so many warring images attempting to convey the reality of Jesus, some more biblically accurate than others. Of them all, perhaps the most confusing is the theme of our lectionary readings today, Christ the King Sunday. The problem is simple. How do we associate Jesus, our Lord on a cross, with any sort of monarchialism? What serves to connect the Nazarene carpenter or the suffering servant with the king of the now and future kingdom? What does Jesus have to do with Caesar? How could a figure as apolitical as Jesus who died without a penny to his name, be a king, since he had no apparent nation to rule. Furthermore, how do we connect Jesus with a title that is so undemocratic and un-American, so politically incorrect? How can we identify this person comfortably with the title King of Kings and Lord of Lords? Despite the setting of the crucifixion, Luke in chapter 23 
does not treat the picture of this dying king as, as a tragedy. Paradoxes abound, as in the figure of the Lord of heaven dying between two thieves. Even in his agony, Jesus can turn to the penitent robber on one side and assure him that they will be together in paradise. No picture, no likeness, no commentary can explain any of these off the scale truths. We can only believe and worship and take heart. <clears throat> and I'd also like to share this from Father Peter John Cameron, a Dominican. The incredible thing is that it is on the absolutely worst day of his life, the day he is on the verge of death, that the good thief recognizes Jesus Christ to be a king. And maybe that is the point of the feast of Christ the king. Minutes from dying, the good thief finds himself still looking for something more, still longing, still moved by hope, desperate for compassion. The deriding rulers at the foot of the cross sneer at Jesus. Let him save himself. But the good thief does something even more brazen than daring Jesus to come down from the cross. The good thief begs Jesus for mercy. Instead of fixating on his own lifetime of crime, the good thief looks into the face of the man fixed to the cross beside him. <clears throat> and there in, that, in the human gaze of Jesus, the good thief discovers what he had been searching for all his long, lawless life. The more truly a person knows their own misery, says St. Albert the Great, the more fully and clearly do they behold the majesty of God. The good thief is living proof of this. For what is a king but an unassailable force, a protection against enemies, a refuge? The king in our life is our go-to the unsurpassable something we ultimately take recourse in and rely on when gutted by desolation. Why does the good thief acclaim Jesus as a king headed for paradise? Because he recognizes in Christ a majestic love that races to attend him in his affliction and woo him in his misery. That sacred heart that in mere moments will be pierced by a lance is even now bursting with love for the good thief. God's kingship is a rule of love that seeks and finds us by an inventiveness that is new. That is what St. Teresa of Avila calls Christ's startling majesty. Why doesn't Jesus come down from the cross? simply because no king worthy of the title ever would. For a king is someone who seeks the common good of the people and not his, his own private profit. Christ exemplifies his kingship by acting like a servant towards us. God's sovereignty is not manifested in keeping what belongs to him for himself, but in abandoning it. Jesus is made king in the midst of excruciating suffering simply because that is when we need a king the most. Jesus' kingship is his surrender of himself to people, the yielding up of his very existence. All our king asks of us is to accept his kingship, a Eucharistic gift. But keep in mind, I will never want Christ the King as long as I am occupying the throne myself. We can only resemble God by casting aside the limitations 
of our personality to allow God himself to reign in us. To claim Christ as king is to confess that I am not the master of my own life and situation. I am not in control. I, am not, I do not direct my own destiny. I do not have the answers. I do not wear the crown. All has been given to me. We pay homage to Christ as king by relying on him. When what we experience in ourselves is failure, confusion, powerlessness, negativity, waywardness, misery, shame. The 14th century monk Nicholas Cabasilas offers us awesome encouragement. Christ entered upon a pure and genuine kingship. He exercises leadership by being more cheerful toward us than friends, more tender than a father, more united to us than members of the same body, more necessary than a heart, making us yield without fear, but by being himself the power that governs and attaches his, his subjects to himself. In this Eucharist, as we pray the Our Father and say the words, Thy kingdom come, let's lay down all our resistance, self-reliance, and regret, and let's beg Christ our King for the paradise that begins right here and now in the faith we share with each other. <clears throat> and all I would add are these words, that in the scripture that we have for us today, the first lesson, we see how passionate God is for this people of his in that through Jeremiah he lets the kings know that they have been tried and found wanting and from now on God is going to shepherd this people and he will find the way but ultimately the great shepherd of the sheep will come in the person of our Lord as we just heard but they're being put on notice that earthly kings, no matter how good they might be, can't begin to compare with what God can do for his own people and for the world that he created. And in the second lesson, Paul is addressing the Colossians and letting them know who it is that they have believed in, who it is that whose second coming is delayed, and what is this Jesus Christ, this person, the anointed one of God? And I encourage you today, take the bulletin or take the second lesson out of the bulletin and take it home and reflect on it. Read it over prayerfully. Ask the Holy Spirit to help you to understand the reading, to appreciate the reading, so that you can come away with a much deeper awareness of what it is for us to call Christ as our King. Because we have lots of things, lots of allegiances that try to claim our loyalty, our fealty. But ultimately, it's the Lord who has the right over us by virtue of our baptism. And it's the Lord who has the right to step into our life, no matter where we are, no matter what we're going through, and to walk with us, which is exactly what he does. That's why his reigning from a cross, rather than some throne, is the reminder to us that this king this God of ours knows that the ultimate enemy that has to be faced is death and everything that death reflects in our lives. And that even at the time of our death, this king will not abandon us. 
But he will say to us, as we say, as the good thief said, today you will be with me in paradise. If we have been faithful to him, if we have known him, if we have loved him, we don't have to fear that those words will never be spoken to us. And to give us that assurance, to remind us that he is with us, and not just in this time that we spend here, but each day, he gives us himself in Holy Communion today, his body and blood, to remind us that he is with us and that we are with him. And that is a bond established in baptism that nothing can ever break. We can walk away from it. We can abandon it. We can reject it. But he doesn't do any of that. He doesn't walk away. He doesn't abandon us. He doesn't reject us. He, he walks this journey with us from that moment until forever in eternity. And for that today, we give great thanks. Now, please turn again in your bulletins to the Nicene Creed. The bottom of page 12, let us renew our commitment to our Lord. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten from the Father, God from God, light from light. Their God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. <clears throat> United with your saints across time and place, O oh God, we pray for the church and our shared world. We pray for your church, embolden your church and faith-based organizations in creative and collaborative ministries, and increase our work for the sake of the gospel. We pray for Justin of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Paula, our bishop, and Mike, our rector, the Anglican Church in the province of Uganda, their primate bishops, clergy, and lay people, the clergy of our diocese, our bishop, priests, and deacons, and their ministries and parishes, as well as our clergy and specialized ministries, such as chaplaincies, teaching, and hospice care, and for our companion diocese of Southeast Mexico and rank South Sudan. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. <laughs> we pray for the earth, protect waterways from pollution and animal habitats from destruction, for the health of the Fox River and all the Illinois native prairies in our region. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for nations of the world, instill in every leader's heart, especially Joseph, the President of the United States, and all federal, state, and local government officials, a desire for justice and peace. Support the international collaborations that seek the goals of health and joy for all people. Remember those names listed in today's bulletin in our intention books or on the intercessory prayer list and those names we wish to mention now. 
Pat Sherman, the survivors of the attack, most recent attack of gun violence. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for all who are undermined or oppressed. Amplify the voices of the unheard and break open stubborn systems of injustice, especially those for those living in Ukraine and Russia, Iran, North and South Korea, Somalia, Yemen, Kenya, Uganda, Nigeria, Ethiopia, Eritrea, North and South Sudan. Bring about your righteousness and fill us all with your redeeming light. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for this assembly. <clears throat> Guide our rector, wardens, vestry persons, and ministries in discernment and nurture new leaders with fresh ideas. We pray for those, <clears throat> excuse me. We pray for those in our parish who are celebrating birthdays and anniversaries this week. Jason Barzik, Samantha Williams, Terry Allen, Barb Gavin, and Kendall Williams. Are there any other birthdays or anniversaries we wish to mention? Give this congregation a spirit of mutual respect, discipleship, and service. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We give thanks for all who have died in their faith, especially Julia Soyak, and those names we wish to mention now. Console us who mourn and comfort us with the beautiful promise of life in your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. <clears throat> Let us now offer the prayer for the mission of our parish found inside the front cover of the bulletin. Loving God, through your grace, guide us, the people of Calvary Episcopal Church, to joyfully carry out our mission of growing faith in your Son, Jesus Christ. Fill us with your Holy Spirit that we may develop a living faith that deepens our understanding of you and strengthens our awareness of the needs of others. May we be a transforming light within our parish and within the community. All this we ask in the name of your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us now confess our sins against God and our neighbor. <coughs> Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, <clears throat> by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, <clears throat> and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. <clears throat> Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Okay, please be seated. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Today's altar flowers have been generously given by Ginger Arndt as a thank offering to the greater glory of God 
In gratitude for all of the blessings provided our congregation at this time of Thanksgiving. Also, I uh, just want to say thank you to the members of our altar guild who decorated for Thanksgiving, as you might see behind me here. Also, um, to remind you that coming this Thursday, this Thanksgiving day, we do have a service at 1030. And as Joel will tell us now, uh, we also have the meal for anyone in the parish or any others that you may know would like to invite who don't have a place to be on Thanksgiving Day and can gather together here for our meal at noon. Take it away. And uh, the meals at noon, if you were bringing something inside of here, by about 32 or 40 or so. If you are coming, you can sign up. There's a place to come. Either right by the kitchen, or you can visit from here, or you can have to do something in the park. And if you're bringing something inside, So you're welcome to stay if you're going to have a Thanksgiving meal with the family later in the day. Join us and just consider the new meal that are uh, for her. So, anyway, we'd like to share that and it's part of the idea of being a Calvary family. So you're all invited and we'd love to see you. <coughs> The altar, I, I've already said that. Okay. Father, this is Heather. Discretionary fund is the, that uh, gathering of money one Sunday a month uh, on the third Sunday of the month, which is today, that I use to help people who are in need. And so the open plate collection today is for the discretionary fund. So if you will be generous according to your means, it will be greatly appreciated, especially by those that I will be able to help. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. You should have received by now uh, an email with the attachment of the uh, card for you to fill out for your stewardship pledge for our, this coming year. Uh, if you have your pledge with you, we'll be happy to receive it. You can put it in the collection plate. You can drop it off at the office. You can email it in. You can mail it through snail mail, whatever you, you choose to do. But we'd like to have those uh, pledges by December the 20th at the latest. But uh, along those lines, um, it... Uh, you have opportunities on those pledge cards to note if you would like to do some particular ministry here within the church. There are a number of needs. And so please consider how you might be able to volunteer some of your time, perhaps as an usher or a greeter, or in some other capacity, helping to count the collections or, or just lending a hand and other things. Or if you haven't done it before, and you'd like to give it a try, uh, even to sign up for coffee hour. Um, <clears throat> next Sunday, the first Sunday of Advent, we're calling our Return to Normal Sunday, or I guess it's going to be kind of a new normal. Uh, and what that will entail is that uh, some of the things we've been doing over the last two years uh, will be put aside and we'll try to remember how we used to do things. Um, if one, well, two particular things. Number one would be that we will, again, hopefully have people to help take up the collection and then to present the uh, offerings plus the elements, the bread and wine, uh, to me at the altar. And then at communion time, we will begin to again kneel at the communion rail 
or stand if you can't kneel. And because several weeks ago, in fact, I think it's about six weeks ago now, our bishop gave permission for us to return to ministering the common cup at Holy Communion. And I know that some people will probably never receive that way again, um, but there are those who will. And so that option will be available together with receiving the regular host in your hand uh, as we pass by on the communion rail. However, we will also make available the option of the little communion cups. And so just to try this method out, if you want to receive communion in the quote unquote traditional way, you can just put your hands out like this and then I will place the host in your hand. And then if you want to receive from the chalice, when it comes to you from the lamb, you just steady the base and take it like you always did. And then the lamb will move to the next person. If you want to receive the small cup, I will gladly place in your hand one of the small ones. But what I'm asking you to do is to do this. Now, this is not an Italian gesture, even though I was asked about that at 8 o'clock, and I almost said something about it. So I figured I'd beat you to the punch here. But uh, you do this, which is what a neighboring parish does. That's the clue that you want me to put the, one of those plastic cups with the host and the wine in your hand, okay? So we'll try that and see. We're experimenting about how many hosts to consecrate and how many of the little cups to consecrate, depending on what people want to receive, how they want to receive Holy Communion. And since we're permitted to go back to that practice, um, <clears throat> we need to give you that option. Yes? If they get the little cup, what do they do with it? Do they do it, take it there? When, they, when you finish receiving, you can receive it here at the, at the rail, both. Then go out the side door, and then there will be a receptacle there for you to put the empties in. Okay? Thank you for reminding me of that. Anyway, we'll work the bugs out as we go, and hopefully someday we'll be able to be totally normal again, whatever that means. Um, <clears throat> Anything else? Anybody via Zoom or here in church have an announcement? Okay. So then on page 16, please join me in the offertory prayer. <clears throat> Eternal God, as we celebrate the sacrifice of Christ, which has reconciled all things to you, we pray that your Son will bestow upon the world the gifts of unity and peace through the same Jesus Christ. Amen. <clears throat>
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Though he is one with you in glory, he emptied himself to share our human nature, so that by accepting our mortal suffering, he might restore us to fellowship with you. Now, as the risen one, he has poured out upon the church the promised gift of the Holy Spirit, making us partakers of what belongs to him, the ministry of priest, prophet, and king. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please kneel or be seated. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your son. For in these last days, you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the savior and redeemer of the world. In him, you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. <clears throat> After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins whenever you drink it. Do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. Edmund of East Anglia and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, with him, and in him, 
in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> and now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. <clears throat> In union, blessed Jesus, with the Christian faithful across the world, gathered at every altar of your church, where your blessed body and blood are offered this day, I long to offer you praise and thanksgiving for creation and all the blessings of this life, for the redemption won for us by your life, death, and resurrection, for the means of grace and the hope of glory, and particularly for the blessings given me. I believe that you are truly present in the Holy Sacrament, and since I cannot at this time receive communion, I pray you to come into my heart. I unite myself with you and embrace you with all my heart, my soul, and my mind. Let nothing separate me from you. Let me serve you in this life until by your grace, I come to your glorious kingdom and unending peace. Come, Lord Jesus, and dwell in my heart in the fullness of your strength. Be my wisdom and guide me in right pathways. Conform my life and actions to the image of your holiness and in the power of your gracious might. Rule over every hostile power that threatens or disturbs the growth of your kingdom, who with the Father and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God in glory everlasting. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. And feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. And just as a reminder, the plastic cups, if you're not familiar or don't, may not remember, the host is on the bottom and the precious blood on the top. So after I say to you, the body and blood of Christ, you can respond, amen, and then take it. If you're on this side, step that way. On this side, step that way. Turn it over, receive the body of Christ, then flip it back and receive the blood of Christ and then in the baskets that you see aligned with aluminum foil, just deposit the empty there. The body and blood of Christ. 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 The body 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 of Christ
Christ, the body and blood of Christ, blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and upon you, you see your name with you forever. Christ, blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, come upon you, and you in the name of you, the blood of Christ, the body and blood of Christ, the body and blood of Christ. The body and blood of Christ. The blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit come upon you, Brady, remain with you forever. The body and blood of Christ. The blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit come upon you, Jesus, remain with you forever. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body and blood of Christ. Body and blood of Christ. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven.
<clears throat> the prayer after Holy Communion. Let us pray. Eternal God, by this holy feast, you make us one with Christ. Keep us in that holy fellowship that we may perform those good works which you have prepared for us to do through Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever.